Hello everyone, it's Wednesday, July 13th. I'm David Song, currency analyst with Daily FX, here to cover the Bank of Canada interest rate decision. And even though Governor Stephen Polos and company are widely anticipated to keep the benchmark interest rate at 0.50%, of course, we'll be digging into the fresh batch of central bank rhetoric along with the monetary policy report the quarterly monetary policy report we'll see of course if that will reveal anything new anything meaningful for us to chew on and of course you know we'll see if that will also highlight a material shift in the policy outlook as of course we've seen the bank of canada largely endorse this wait and see approach throughout 2016 especially following those emergency rate cuts or the insurance rate cuts i should say in 2015 and along with that we'll see if canada will uh, serve as an example to the global community and of as of course you know, as we did have prime minister Trudeau come into office you know he did expand the budget to further support the real economy and of course noting you know some of the concerns on whether or not monetary policy you know is it so losing some of its efficacy in terms of supporting the real economy so of course we'll dig into the fresh rhetoric here and you know we'll see whether or not we get a meaningful market reaction to the boc this morning but for now you know we'll see um how the dollar cad will fit here and you know what let's bring up the charts here wrong screen we're broadly stuck uh, in this near term sort of wedge triangle formation a continuation pattern if you will uh, but looks as though we may continue to face this narrowing range right now we still have this sort of bearish tilt going on from all the way back in April and of course you know we continue to note this 131.30 zone here where we dabbled at that level you know even a few times this month dabbled back at it back in that May period here, but largely failed to you know make this meaningful break to the top side of a really convincing closing price above this near-term Fibonacci overlap that I'm watching. So we'll continue to watch for some resistance up there, but you know we'll see if we could largely retain this sort of bullish pattern here. And of course, bigger picture, you know I'm still relatively bullish on this pair here as we're still holding that trend line from all the way back in 2012. Uh, but for now, again, should we see a more material shift from the Bank of Canada? If we do see Governor Stephen Polos largely suggest that the central bank will gradually move away from its easing cycle, we may see the Canadian dollar uh, actually catch a bit off of those headlines. So we'll see again if we get anything meaningful from the BOC today. But um, uh, if you guys had a chance to actually look over my uh, trade the news report on the BOC, here's what happened last time around. And, and again, similar story to what happened um, at the last rate decision where we did see the Bank of Canada retain its current policy. But nevertheless, you know, subsequent to the announcement, we actually did see a nice bullish reaction in the Canadian dollar with the dollar cat tra trading lower uh, large broke back below that 131 handle so we'll see if we get something similar this time around uh, but again we'll see if we get anything more material in terms of the monetary policy outlook um, we'll see if again we get uh, this suggestion if you will greater willingness from the BOC to move away from its easing cycle especially as and we have seen uh, Governor Stephen Polo has turned a little bit more upbeat on the economy and of course you know we're still seeing the Canadian economy adjust to the oil price shock but you know we'll continue to watch in terms of uh, the BOC's dual mandate you know, we did have some disappointing employment numbers out of Canada last Friday, but, you know, we're still seeing some stickiness in inflation, even though we did see a bit of a downtick in the last um, consumer price index release. So, you know, we'll keep a close eye on some of the data prints here. But in terms of the dollar cad, uh, looks as though we just need a little bit more of a meaningful sort of fundamental catalyst, if you will, to get this going on uh, for better near term directional bias. And, you know, even though we went through Canon employment, not farm payrolls last Friday, you know, we largely are still stuck within this triangle wedge formation here. So we'll look for a move. But if we fail to retain this near term bullish formation here, and, you know, I'm still scratching my head over on whether or not, you know, what we're seeing in the RSI, you know, may foreshadow what may come about in terms of price. So I'm still watching this sort of bearish formation that we have in the RSI from all the way back in uh, January period here. It looks as though we're trying to threaten this formation as we're trying to break out of or break above trendline resistance here. So, you know, I'm waiting for a little bit more conviction on whether or not I could call this a real break to the top side. I would like to see price follow suit here you know so the initial signs that i look for again is a closing price above that 13130 zone uh but again we'll see if we're largely breaking out of this bearish formation we'll see if we could you know tack on some new trend lines here we'll see if we could preserve this sort of near-term bullish formation that's going on however if we fail to retain you know some of the more bullish formations as of late 
if we do break down from trendline support and you know for that i'm looking for a closing price below this 129.30 zone here if you do break down from this may open up may revisit those lows from back in june and of course i have a nice fibonacci overlap right between that 126.20 into the 126.50 zone so we'll keep that on the radar but again if we do break down from this formation may highlight some more sideways price action here may open up some of the downside risk uh, but of course, another theme that we're watching is what's happening with crude prices. And of course, as Canada continues to adjust um, to, again, the oil price shock, you know, we'll continue to be mindful of some of the key relationships that continues to drive market volatility. But, you know, before we jump into the rate decision, just a quick overview of what's happening with crude prices. And this is where, you know, if you're watching the correlation between oil and the Canadian dollar, this is where, you know, I'm a little bit concerned on whether or not we could see some further headwinds for the Canadian dollar as it looks as though the recent run up that we had especially from early on this year in oil prices may be coming to an end. So it looks as though we're certainly starting to lose some ground here in terms of the oil advance. And if you're drawing simple trend lines, we've certainly broken down from that trend that we have carried over from all the way back in February. Same story here, largely for the relative strength index, which failed to retain that bullish pattern. So, you know, for now, it looks as though we could be on a more bearish trajectory here. Let me just clean up my trend lines a little bit. But we'll see if we could preserve this formation. And, you know, last week we did break below those June lows, some soft support zone right now. And as a result, you know, we'll continue to watch this bearish formation that's happening. You know, look more like a descending triangle formation right now. But, you know, the big question mark I think right now is are we breaking down? from this sort of formation right now. Is that going to open up some of the downside risk? And you know, I'm watching for some soft support right around that 4430 zone, the monthly low that we set. However, as we broke those lows from back in June, I'll be watching some former soft support zones for new resistance going forward. And again, may open up some of the downside risk as long as we're able to retain the bearish formation here in price, as well as the bearish formation here in the relative strength index. So we'll see if these formations will continue to take shape over the near term uh, but for now we'll see whether or not these uh, key relationships will hold up going forward here and you know in light of what's happening in Canada again we'll see if they will serve as a meaningful example to the global community and of course you know a key theme that we'll need to watch over the coming days and I think you know we'll see what's going to happen with Japan as you know there's a lot of speculation uh, especially following the local elections uh, from early on this week or over the weekend and with uh, Prime Minister Abe's coalition government gaining increased majority at the upper house um, there is speculation that we may see a meaningful fiscal stimulus package being uh, laid out over the coming days we'll see if again that's unveiled over the coming days right now seeing a lot of speculation that it might amount up to 10 trillion yen so of course we'll see how that will all play out as we have seen prime minister abe uh, push out further delay the sales tax hike plan for 2017 and of course you know we'll see how the boj will react to all this but again are we going to see this more of a global theme where you know we see uh, local authorities revert to look more towards fiscal stimulus now rather than monetary policy as of course a lot of market participants officials government officials you know really weighing on whether or not monetary policy is having the intended impact and of course the efficacy of all these non-standard measures these low interest rate policies held by the major central bank so you know we'll see if we get anything meaningful also from the boj who's due up at the end of the month but for now you know we'll continue to watch some of the downside risk here bigger picture and of course we'll see if japan you know may follow right behind Canon in terms of reverting to or looking more towards fiscal stimulus rather than putting further emphasis on these major central banks to uh, to further support the real economies going forward. So we'll continue to watch that story. Again, uh, just over the next two weeks, you know, we'll play a little bit more attention to what's happening, you know, in Japan, especially with the fiscal as well as the monetary policy outlook. But in regards to the dollar here, you know, I think, you know, we just got to be careful with the greenback here. And there's a key theme that I'm watching right now. Uh, but for now, when you're taking a look at the Dow Jones FXCM US dollar index, we're sort of range bound right now. So, you know, I think it's all about which counterparts that you're watching right now. And there is a key theme that I'm watching where we're seeing some resilience. Let me note that way in the commodity block currencies while we're seeing some weakness in the European block. So we'll see if some of those themes will largely materialize going forward. But, you know, even beyond what's happening with the dollar cad as it's stubbornly stuck in this triangle wedge formation right now, you know, I think we need to keep close eye on what's happening with the Aussie as we did break to fresh 
monthly highs yesterday. I mean, Kiwi has been also on a rampage as well. We've broken out this near-term triangle formation, a continuation pattern to stretch the fresh monthly, fresh 2016 highs as well. So for now, we'll continue to watch this dynamic. Um, again, this resilience that we're seeing in the commodity block currencies, we'll see if that will also be a key theme to watch going forward as we continue to see commodity prices hold up fairly well and especially if you guys have been watching what's happening with gold prices right now despite the near-term pullback we'll see if former resistance zones will offer some new support going forward and of course we'll see if some of these themes will also um, get carried through the summer months here as we continue to weigh the outlook uh, not only for the global economy, but of course the outlook for monetary policy as well So just under two minutes until we get into the BOC So you know what? Let's focus on the dollar cad here and I'll do a quick top-down for you guys You know and I take I tend to do you know top-down analysis So I look at you know the daily charts first scroll down to the four hour and then you know I scroll down into the hourly so let me just bring up um, a shorter term time frame here for us maybe even a 30 minute Just to watch the market reaction Apologies about the delay here Give my charts a second to load up. Uh, but on that front, again, just a quick reminder here, guys, what happened last time around when we got into the BOC, and even though we did see uh, the Bank of Canada largely retain its current policy, we saw a nice bullish reaction in the Canadian dollar as it looks as though, again, Governor Stephen Polos, um, again, could be suggestive that they will look to gradually move away from the easing cycle going forward. Not sure what is going on with my charts here, guys. Give me a quick second. Apologies about that. This means that my computer is uh, not too cooperative today. Uh, but just a few seconds out, guys, until we get the Bank of Canada. And again, BOC largely anticipated to retain their current policy. Keep that benchmark interest rate at 0.50. And here we go. Bank of Canada keeps rates unchanged at 0.5. Says here, growth fundamentals in place, global climate less certain. Uh, growth forecast lowered on weaker exports as well as investment outlook. Again, they reduced the 2016 GDP forecast to 1.3% from 1.7%. It says complex adjustment to lower commodity prices continues, uh, again, in regards to the real economy. Uh, they expect export growth to pick up in the second half of this year despite volatility. Brexit fallout highly uncertain, certain, difficult to forecast. It says output gap could close later than expected, maybe closer towards the end of 2017. And they're also noting here financial vulnerabilities elevated and rising, particularly in Toronto, Vancouver. And of course, um, you know, what's happening with the housing market there, some concerns about that. Also noting here inflation uh, expected to average close to 2% through 2017. So, you know, initial remarks here, it looks as though the BOC will continue to endorse this wait and see approach. And again, you know, they're noting some uncertainty in regards to, you know, the global growth outlook, especially following the whole Brexit theme right now. Uh, but, you know, despite the downward revision in the growth forecast, and again, looks like they're larger attributing to that or attributing that to some of the external factors. We are seeing a nice bullish move in the Canadian dollar here uh, or down leg in the dollar cat. So from here, I'll watch this 2980 into the 20. 90 zone here we'll see if we could clear that hurdle the the weekly lows if you will as well we'll see if we could break down from that region we'll see if we could threaten again that bullish pattern that we have carried over from uh, largely the end of the previous month we'll see if we could break down from that to open up some of the downside risk here but again in terms of the bank of canada rate decision more the same largely if you will and again we did see the boc cut the 2016 GDP forecast, but again, still noting inflation is holding up fairly well. So as a result, again, we may see the BOC uh, continue on with the current policy going forward. And even beyond that, you know, it looks as though we may see the BOC gradually move away from the easing cycle, as of course, um, they still are looking for a little bit more of competitive rate of growth down the road here, especially for 2017. And again, they expect export growth to pick up in the second half of this year as well. Right. Let's see here. I did want to bring up some other themes that I'm watching right now, guys. Just give me a second here. And the you know, first thing I want to bring up here is what's happening with retail positioning. And 
um, right now, dollar CAD, you know, we noted some of the extreme readings that we saw over the last few months, earlier this year, if you will. And, you know, let me just bring up the Daily Effects on Demand website for this one. You know, we saw that ratio or retail sentiment spike all the way up to that 2.0 mark, you know, back in late April period. And, you know, ever since then, we've been sort of narrowing here or seeing sentiment, you know, hold a very tight range, if you will. Uh, we saw a tag of that 1.75 region back in June to the downside. We're still watching that minus 1.0 mark. So, you know, we may continue to see this sort of range on this consolidation phase in the dollar cat exchange rate. But right now, the biggest theme I want to note here is the fact that, you know, taking a look at the commodity block as a whole, and, you know, I, I, I tend to look at, um, participation here and you know based on sort of popularity if you will you know i understand that you know dollar cat aussie dollar kiwi dollar especially might not be as popular as such as the euro dollar dollar yen even you know and as a result i do take some of these uh, you know sentiment readings with a grain of salt here but uh, before that kicked out. Um, but if you take a look at what's happening right now with some of the SSI figures right now, you know, the biggest thing I want to note here is the fact that the retail crowd is net short the commodity block currencies as a whole. So again, they're net long dollar CAD and again, should Aussie dollar show up here, they're net short Aussie dollar, net short Kiwi dollar. So again, you know, that's probably the biggest thing that I'm watching right now is that, you know, despite the resilience that we're seeing in the commodity block currencies as of late, you know, the retail crowd continues to fight some of that momentum here. And that's what gets me a little bit concerned. And, you know, as a result, are we going to see the commodity block continue to outperform against some of its major counterparts, especially the European block going forward? So, you know, that's going to be a key thing to watch here. But following the Bank of Canada, guys, again, not sure if we're going to get any any uh, further follow through here. You know, it looks like that we're sputtering out a little bit. We'll continue to watch those weekly lows that we carved out here. And again, I'll see whether or not we could get a bigger threat of this bullish pattern that we have carried over from the previous month. You know, should we be able to break below, close below this 129.80, 129.90 zone here for a little bit more conviction of that. Uh, but for now, not sure if we're going to get that, especially ahead of some of the bigger event risk that we have scheduled for the uh, for this weekend of course you know we'll continue to watch the slew of fed commentary that we have with a lot of 2016 voting members on the wires this week but you know if you're watching those headlines <coughs> from ms loretta mester from esther george even from fed governor mr dan trahula we really haven't seen much uh, in terms of the monetary policy outlook and, you know we continue to see some more of the same commentary from fed officials and as a result you know i personally wouldn't be surprised if we do see another unanimous vote to retain the current policy at the next fed interest rate decision on july 27th um so as a result we may see some we may see some dollar weakness going into that you know if you guys are watching fed funds futures right now markets are still pricing limited probability for a 2016 rate hike so of course you know we'll see if interest rate expectations will continue to deteriorate as fed officials remain in no rush to and further normalize monetary policy. So for now, you know, we'll see if the commodity block currencies will continue to outperform as, you know, not only the BOC, but the RBA, RBNZ as well. You know, it looks as though they're starting to reach their extremes in terms of monetary policy support. And of course, we've seen officials at the Reserve Bank of New Zealand note that, you know, further reduction in the official cash rate there may heighten financial instability. So a lot of concerns on where policy is headed. So for now, you know, we'll watch, again, the bigger, broader theme where we're seeing commodity block currencies outperform as retail crowd, the retail FX crowd is net short the commodity block currency. So, you know, on that, guys, um, not seeing much fall through here behind the initial move. You know, we'll see if the dollar CAD can again break below the weekly lows, may open up the risk for further decline here. But we'll be mindful again of you know this the fresh batch of central bank rhetoric that you know is scheduled for the weekend. Of course, we have the Bank of England interest rate decision on tap tomorrow with actually a majority of economists looking for a rate cut from the Bank of England. So we'll see how that will pan out. Uh, but I do have another webinar coming up at 12.30 Eastern today, guys. So, you know, I'll spend a little bit more time on the BOE, on you know some of the bigger U.S. data prints that we have scheduled for this weekend. Of course, some of the key trade setups, key dynamics that I'm watching right now in terms of uh, what's happening across the major currencies, even based upon what's happening, you know, across the financial markets right now, as we are seeing uh, this nice bounce in risk appetite. We'll see if that will continue over the coming days, as, of course, a lot of expectations that we may see another flood of 
global monetary support going forward. But with that, guys, um, I'll wrap things up here. And again, looks as though, you know, despite the initial bullish reaction in the Canadian dollar, now taking the dollar cat here, not sure if we're going to be ready to, you know, break below those weekly lows, get a little bit more of a meaningful directional bias over the near term, as we're still large stuck within this wedge triangle formation. So again, it looks as though we may need just a bigger fundamental catalyst, if you will, to get a little bit more of a meaningful directional bias here. But again, continue to watch this narrow range here. And of course, textbook definition, you know, 20, 30 percent before we hit that apex. That's when we tend to look for a bigger break here. So we'll see if that will largely materialize over the coming days. But I hope to see you all you know, in just a few hours here, I'll be you know, spending a little bit more time on some of the other pairs to watch. We'll talk about the Bank of England as well as some of the U.S. data prints on tap, especially for Friday with U.S. retail sales, consumer price index on tap. With all that out of the way, guys, hope to see you all in just a few hours. Hope you enjoyed today's overview of the Bank of Canada interest rate decision. But again, just be mindful here of the conditions that we face. And of course, you know, we'll see how retail sentiment continues to fare here, you know, especially if we uh, start to see a little bit more of a meaningful dynamic, especially with some of these key market relationships that continues to take shape. With that, guys, the best of luck on all your trades. And again, I'll be back on uh, the Daily Fix live trade room right around 12.30 Eastern uh, to do a little bit more of a comprehensive overview of the majors as well as some of the other securities that, I'm, uh, that are on my radar. With that, guys, uh, have a great day. And again, hope to see you all again in just a few hours.